Hey y'all, class is in session. All right, this is a study on the mark of the beast. And I promise you it's a study that you have never heard before. I've never heard it, but we have all the evidence right here in that black book they call the Bible, the word of the living God. And is there a man coming up on the earth? No. Has he already been here? Yes. Has he left his mark? Yes. What's the next major event that the world is going to see? Right here, Second Thessalonians tells us right here. It is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting in verse 5 there. Manifest token of the judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer. So there's some people who are suffering for this truth. Saying it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Remember that. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yahushua, the Messiah. Yahushua HaMashiach who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, remember saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So they gave us testimonies of the Lord and Savior, and his word, the gospel, that we should repent and believe the gospel, like our Lord said when he first came out of the wilderness. Repent and believe the gospel, for behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, he was issuing heaven's decree upon the earth for all the people, because it was said by Moses that God would raise up a prophet like unto himself, and uh, that it, God would require that all people obey him. And so, uh, we see the next major event is him coming in flames of, of in flaming fire and uh, he's coming to be glorified in his saints. Okay, I guess we should start right there to see what is a saint. Okay, down here in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, I used to wonder what is a saint because uh, the Roman Catholic Church and then we talk like when people died, they were a saint. Or it's like somebody, was it like somebody walking around with a halo over their head? Like uh, they were better than everybody else or something? I said, Lord, what is a saint? So I promised somebody might get in his word and see what he had to say about it. So I've done that. And there's many things in here talking about the saints, explaining what they are. But this one explains it very explicitly. In verse 12 of Revelation 14, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So what is a saint? Someone who keeps God's commandments. It's like Jesus did. Jesus said, I've kept my Father's commandments. And I want you to love me and to keep my commandments also. But also while we're right there in Revelation 14, there's a severe consequences for anyone who joins up with this group of people and follows that number. And we'll show you what that number is here in just a minute. But uh, the number is all the people. It's going to try and tell you that you're wrong for doing it this way, for following God's commandment. There's a whole big number. It's like Christ has a, we're all one as believers in the Son of God, uh, believers in Christ, we're all one in Him. And we make up a body. Well, in this false beast, Mark, there's a body of people also that will be made up. And in Daniel chapter 7, it says, Daniel says that when uh, the Ancient of Days come, that that body, the beast's body, will be taken and given unto the burning flame. And so, you don't want to be a part of that body. Uh-huh. That's why God said, come out of her, my people. To be not part of her place, or in one day, her it'll come down upon it. In other words, in one day, death, morning, and famine. There's a much better way, though, if you want to see the kingdom of heaven. Yahushua sets us free. Okay, while we're in Revelation 14, there, uh, it's a severe penalty for following this mark. Uh, we start right back there at verse 9. That third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. <coughs> And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast, and his image, and whosoever receiveth his mark, the mark of his name. Okay, so we're, we see, they'll be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the lamb. The lamb? The lamb? Could the lamb actually do that? That precious lamb? That's what it says right there, in the presence of the holy angels, they'll be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the lamb. Those who, whosoever receives the mark of his name. And so, uh, we have to, See, over here now, in uh, Revelation chapter 15, this beast, image, mark, and number, can we can have victory over it. Because right here in chapter 15, John the Revelator, Holy Apostle Johann, John, said, I saw, in verse 2, I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God, and they sung the song of Moses. You know, I'm just giving you all the, the basics here. You can go further into the study of this yourself, if you wish to. But, uh, anyway, he says there's victory over this. It's not something that people cannot uh, overcome. They can have victory over it. And there's four things he mentions here that they have victory over. The first one, he says, they have victory over the beast and over his image. Number two, over his mark. Number three, and over the number of his name. Four. We need to find out what those are. The beast, we know, in Daniel chapter 7, I'll turn it over there. Daniel chapter 7 says, uh, in verse 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Okay, so this fourth kingdom, if you know your history, which they taught this stuff even in elementary classes. I remember my sons had come home from school and said, Hey, Dad, we were studying about Rome today. And that's true what the Bible says. The fourth kingdom on the earth was Rome. So we see right there that the that fourth kingdom, the beast, is Rome. All right? And he has an image. His image equals an engraving of a new 
Lala, or an engraving of a fox commandment. That's what it is. And uh, his mark equals a scar of service to obey that false teaching and the number his, of his name. Well, that equals Adam Nikon. That's in Ezra chapter 2, verse 13. There's when it says there in Ezra. Ezra, yeah, let's go over Go over the book of Ezra. Uh, over here at the book of Ezra. <coughs> Ezra chapter 2. Uh, start here at verse 2. It's not only here, it's in other places. And there's also a book in the Bible called Numbers. And it's uh, about a lot of things, but also it's about uh, the numbering of the people, of the tribes of the people. And stuff. And right here, we'll just use this example. It's in Nehemiah also and other places. But Ezra chapter 2, verse 2. Says these for they which came with the Ruby Bell and uh Yahshua, Nehemiah, and Sariah, Sir, really Yah, some of these names, man. Well, Mordecai, Belshan, Mesfar, Big Raya, Rehom, Bana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. The number of the men. Remember it's a number. It's like uh Go back over here to Revelation it's for one minute here. And uh, we was in chapter fourteen, back one page there. It says uh in chapter thirteen, Revelation thirteen. He calls it all, you heard this one before, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. That no man might buy or sell, save, that's an old English word meaning accept, that no one might buy or sell except he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Hear that? Oh, said it's the number of a man. What did Ezra just say over here in Ezra chapter 2? He was naming off the the children of the providence here, and he says, this is the number of the men of the people. So right there is the number of the men. John was telling people over here in Revelation 13, here is wisdom. How do we get wisdom? We sat down and talked to some old folks, say, hey, tell me something, things that happened way back down there. And they'll tell us, you know, things that happened and give us wisdom. So what, what's John saying? Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding. Who has understanding? Go back to the old, the old folks back there in Ezra. In Ezra chapter 2, there's a the number, the counting of the number. Okay, Ezra chapter 2, this is the number of the men of the people of Israel. Okay, the number of his name. Now he's got a name. So let's move on over here to verse 13 in Ezra chapter 2. Well, verse 12, it's named off a bunch of them, but we'll start at 12. The children of Asgad, 1,220 and 2. Verse 13, the children of Adonikam, 660 and 6. There's the man that Apostle John's talking about. He said, go back to the old folks and get some wisdom. Now, Ezra told us right there, when these tribes of people were being numbered, according to the amount of people that were in each tribe or in each body group, they were... These were the fathers of those people. And so the children of Ed, Edonachim was 660 and 6. And if you notice, the first part of that name is Edonah. That is Lord. Edonah, Edonah. It's like a lot of musicians sing that in their songs, Edonah. And the last part of that, his name is Kong. It means Lord of the Rising. If you go back to your Strong's Concordance or whatever and get that name Edonachim, it breaks into two parts. First is Lord. Second part is Rising. And so this is uh, speaking of a of man, any of us, it could be any of us, that is rising up in the position of Lord over the people, the, the body. But it started with Rome. The beast is Rome. It's a decree that Rome put forth. And uh, the edict was issued by Constantine. They call him the Great. It wasn't so great to go against the word of the living God, though. But uh, the edict he made was on uh, March the 7th, year 321, he put it into law to all the towns and judge, judges of the towns to issue that decree and to all the people that they would no longer uh, keep the seventh day holy, but they would now start keeping the first day of the week holy and honorable unto the venerable day of the sun. They would do the buying and selling on the seventh day Sabbath, and uh, which we know the Ten Commandments. God's Commandments says seventh day is His. And not do no buying and selling on that day. For that's His day, holy day, keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath, seventh day to keep it holy. And so He says, now you do your buying and selling in that law. It's in the law books too. I was on a radio station one time, and they, I was telling them this stuff, and they were saying, man, you're crazy. And uh, so they, they hung up on me, and then the next call that came in was a lawyer up in uh, Omaha, I believe it was, Nebraska. And he said, yeah, that's called him. That's that young man you just hung up on. And, uh, he said, I'm a lawyer and I'm sitting here in my office and I got that book down from my law bookshelf up here and I looked up that, that code that he gave me and sure enough, it's in the book of law. And uh, so anytime the law was passed through the government, they had to document it in historical documentation. So that, that law that Constantine passed was done in the year 321 on March the 7th. And so that was the engraving of a false commandment. That's the image. That's the image right there of the beast. Constantine was a Roman emperor. And so uh, it came out of Rome. The beast is not an animal or something. It's, it represents a kingdom. Remember Daniel chapter 7. Rome. Rome. Okay, this image is an engraving. It's like uh, Moses said that God came down upon Mount Sinai there and he wrote the Ten Commandments with the right hand finger of God. He wrote it with a finger of fire, the right hand, not the left. He didn't have to tell us which hand it was, but he did. He said it was the right hand of God that wrote those commandments. And so this is a false engraving of a false commandment from the seventh day to the first day of the week. Okay, the next thing is his mark. Again, back in the Strong's Concordance or wherever you get your uh, translation of these words, back to the original, 
The word mark is a scar of service. And so it's shown that they're marked by the service to this image that came from the beast. And they, the number, as we saw in Ezra chapter 2, is the numbering of the people, and it makes up a body. And his name is Adonachim, so it's a man that's rising up in the place of God saying, My way is right, the commandment of God is wrong. There's a new way now to worship. On the first day of the week, and the seventh day is done away with. So let's say that Jesus sinned, a lot of people were sad to say, but they say that he broke the Sabbath commandment. But what was his custom in Luke chapter 4? Every He had a custom. A custom something we do all the time. Continually keep doing it. So he had a custom. His custom was every Sabbath day he went to the synagogue and read the scriptures and then he done good all through the Sabbath. Just like it says in Isaiah 58, God requires his people to, to do good. This is what he wants them to do on the Sabbath. And break every bondage and every chain, set the people free. And so uh, we got the beast Rome. We got his image was an engraving of a false commandment. Uh, his mark is a scar of service of those who obey his commandment, this false teaching. And the number is the numbering of the people. So anybody who obeys this false commandment and follows this be teaching, then they're becoming part of that false body, that body under a false commandment. And so they're becoming part of that number of the people. And just as Christ has a body, and we're all members of his body, well, this beast has a body, and, and all who join up with it and obey him as though he were Lord, risen up over their life, this false teaching, then they become part of that number, that body. And so, uh, let's go over here to, uh, what is it? Daniel. Let's go to Daniel, right here. Daniel chapter 7. Okay, we're already there. Okay, let's see here. If that's the number of the people that has become part of his body because that false teaching is Lord over their life. So let's actually, this any of us who put ourselves in that position to obey a false teaching over the true commandment of our God and creator. That commandment actually represents uh, Elohim as our creator. He's the one who created this and, and uh, it shows that he has sanctified us and set us apart from the rest of the world because that day does separate people. And so uh, we need to get over that and come together in the truth, man. We need to be united in the faith as it's written, let God be true and every man a liar. And so if we do that, that's how we overcome. We return to the truth of God's commandments. And uh, does that mean we're going to be perfect all the time and not fall at times? No. If that were the case, then why would God have to send His Son into the world that we might be delivered from our sins and saved? One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Lord, help me today. Show me the way. One day at a time. Okay. One day at a time. He's going to change us. For he's the author and finisher of our faith. We all know that. Okay, let's see what Daniel says here about that body of people in Daniel chapter 7. Okay, Daniel 7, starting at verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days. That's it. That's where we're at, boys and girls. Young men, young women, old men, old women, all of us. We're right here. The ancient of days. That's it. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was said, and the books were open. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. The beast was slain, and his body, remember the number of the people? Christ has a body. This beast has a body. The number of the people, Ezra 2, being numbered in to that number, I beheld even until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So what happens to those who follow that false teaching? They become part of the body of that beast group and they receive man's word over God's word. They receive man's commandment over God's commandment. It's like Jesus said uh, that they teach for doctrine the commandments of man. And they make void the commandments of, and ways of God through their teachings and traditions. Tradition, no more. Are you seeking innocent souls just teaching your tradition? God will hold you to it. Accountable. You didn't have his ordination. So you ain't had an ad and swallow a camel, compass and land and sea just to make the blind see. And when you do, you make them twofold more. The child of hell than they with your tradition. Won't put it on. No more. Tradition. Tradition. No more. Okay. We'll see what happens to them. Daniel chapter 7 there. The ancient of days. But it's concerning the rest of the beast they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were cold long for a season and a time. I saw him not vision and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. They brought him near before him. That's, that's what we're fixing to see right there. Y'all, we're fixing to see the great almighty king coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. Hallelujah. Just like he's said to, to the high priest there, when he asked him, tell us plainly, are you the Christ? He said, I am. Are you the Messiah? Mish uh, are you Yahushua? Mashiach? Are you the Mashiach? God? Yes, he said. And hereafter you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. And all the armies of heaven coming with him. And all of our uh, folks who and family members who we love so dearly who have died and they've gone on in the Lord, our Savior. He's, blessed uh, Paul said that when he comes, he will bring them with him. They will be the first up in the air and then we, which are alive and remain at that time, that we will be caught up together. To meet them in the air. So shall we ever be with our Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to our King. He's coming. That's the day and time we're living in right now. Okay, so we see the beast was wrong. The image was the engraving of a false teaching. His mark was the people that are starved with service to that false teaching. His number, the number of his name is the people being numbered in that body through obeying him as Lord, risen up over their life. And they're in that body of people, numbered with them. And uh, the whole world wondered after the beast. But John, remember in Revelation 15, he said that, uh, that there, he saw these groups of people that had gotten victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, and the number of his name. 
So if it's not a man that's going to come up on the earth and cause people to take a mark and they can't go out and buy no groceries or whatever. No, it's a mark that was left on the earth back in those days. Because in Revelation 13, you know what? It says, he calls it all. We just read it. He calls it all. A-L-L. -L, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. That none might buy or sell, save or accept he who has the mark or the number of his name. And so he calls it all. You know, no matter what language we go to and we ask him, what does that word A-L-L -L mean in your language? You know what they say? It means exactly what it says. All. God is no respecter of persons. He said this started back then and it would be upon all the world. So if it has to pass over all so that uh, what's going to happen to all the people who sin died? They didn't have to conquer this beast, this image, this mark, the number of his name. And this man that would come up on the earth, he would have to resurrect all those dead people and cause them to go through this mark too. That's not going to happen. Only one is the resurrection. Our Lord and King and Savior, our God, our Creator, Joshua. And they call Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. Okay, so it means all. It happened back then. The year 321. And even John in his epistles, in a or second, third John, he said already there's many antichrist opposers of the truth. And they're already opposing the truth. The man of sin is already rising up. The man of sin is that whole body. And that number of people, you're going to have to overcome the number. That's all the people that's going to tell you that you're wrong. They're part of that number. They're going to tell you you're wrong for obeying what? God's commandment. The seventh day Sabbath. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's how we overcome. We follow, stick with the truth. No matter what. Okay, let's see here. He calls it all to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. In Daniel chapter 7, right there again, it says, uh, what is the right hand? Okay, let's see. Over here. Down here at verse 25 it says, He speaks great words against the Most High, El Elyon. That's God Most High. And that was also what the angel, one of the names the angel told Mary to name uh, baby Jesus, Joshua. He said, His name shall be called Ben El Elyon, son of the highest. Okay, he shall speak great words against the Most High, though, and uh, shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Where's the hand at in there? Ah, keep reading. And they, shall, and they shall be given into His hand until a time times and dividing of times. All the the true doctrine is there. All the historical doctrine is right there. And that I would refer you, if you want a whole library full of information for studying more deep depth in this matter, uh, Amazing Facts. Dot, uh, the dot org or dot com, Amazing Facts. So they got a whole library of true uh, historical documentation on these matters. And you can go there and get all the true evidence. So, uh, anyway, he thinks to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand. So you see the hand right there. That's God given it into his hand. The right hand. Uh, I believe it's yet. Represents power. Uh, the one that takes. The one that rules. Okay, so who's given it over into his hand to change times and laws? That's talking about Jehovah, our God. He allows this in order to test us. Uh, that's Deuteronomy chapter 13. Let's go right over there for just a minute. Okay. Deuteronomy 13. Starting verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. So see, these can be signs. Words can be signs and wonders. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For Jehovah, your God, proveth you. He's proven you. To know whether you love Jehovah the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Jehovah the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. Not a man's commandment. Keep Jehovah the Lord God his commandments. Just like Jesus, Yahushua did. Keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or dreamer of dreams shall be put to death just like we saw in Daniel. And all those who are numbered in his body, they will be given to the burning flame. And that's uh, Second Thessalonians what we read. He's coming in flames of burning fire. And uh, take vengeance. So, on all those who obey not his word, the gospel. Everybody fails and has mistakes, but we don't give up, man. We keep on walking. In the faith of the Son of God, we're following His mark. And He didn't go against God's commandments. He obeyed it. How could He be our Savior if He broke the commandments of God? Because sin is transgression of the law. That's in First John. And uh, So He didn't do that. Jesus did sin. Okay, so God has given power to all people through His Son to obey Him. But these people, they submit their service to obey Rome. Man's way. Lies. False teaching. False doctrine. Okay, why can't they buy or sell? Uh, Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 10. Let's go with Nehemiah chapter 10 here. He says that none might buy or sell except those who have the mark or the number of the mark of the beast or the number of his name. They've got to be part of that body in order to buy and sell. Okay, what are they referring to? What's John trying to say to God's people? Because he's writing this stuff to the churches where God's people are. Uh, verse 15 says, In those days in Judah, Nehemiah saying, I saw some trading one presses on the Sabbath, bringing in sheaves and lighting hats or donkeys, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day Saturday. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. And there dwelt men at Tyre therein, uh, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sowed them on the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath, unto the children of Judah and Jerusalem. And then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that you do to profane the seventh day Sabbath? With buying and selling. There it is. That's Nehemiah chapter 13. And again, over here in Nehemiah chapter 10, uh, these group of people had entered into a covenant with God. And it says down here to keep his commandments. In verse 29 and verse uh, 31 of Nehemiah chapter 10, it says, And if the people of the land bring ware or victuals, on the Sabbath day to sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day that we would leave every seventh year and exaction of every day. Okay, so they're saying they wouldn't buy or sell on the Sabbath day. That's Nehemiah chapter 10, 31, and Nehemiah chapter uh, 13, verse 15 through uh, 
What is it? 15 through nothing there? <coughs> okay, so what's John saying? Nobody can, because it's all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead, the forehead, Jeremiah. Well, you know, God blew in, made Adam first, and he blowed in the breath of life, and man became a living soul, capable of receiving, storing knowledge in here, the forehead, in the frontal lobe of the brain. That's the greatest computer that the world knows. There's computers everywhere, but this one is greater than any. It's created by our creator himself, the Almighty, Yeshua. But uh, the forehead is a place where knowledge is stored. And Jeremiah, I believe it's in Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah said, their forehead is that of a harlot, and uh, they've stored false knowledge against God. So how do, how do we overcome this? Mark, uh, he's already came. He's not coming. That's 1,702 years ago that this mark was left on the earth, and the whole world is wondered after. Uh, so is he coming? Is there a man coming? No, he's already came left his mark. Don't follow. How do we get out of it? Let God be true. And every man a liar. Obey the truth of God's commandments, not the commandment that man made. Nobody has no proof or evidence anywhere in Scripture that God or Jesus or any of the apostles or anybody changed that commandment from seventh day to the first. And even Catholic Church admits that they are the ones who was involved in that and that all the people who obey the first day of the week are obeying their commandment and it's the mark of their ecclesiastical power. But it can be overcome by simply returning to the truth. Repent, say, Lord God, I'm sorry I went the wrong way and I repent of that and I return unto the truth of the day that represents you as my creator and us as your people. And so I return unto the truth, Lord God, forgive me and cleanse me from all those Sin. Sin is transgression of the law. And we know he died to take away our sins. So let us return unto the truth. And we'll be overcomers. We'll stand on that sea of glass. Mingle with fire. It's like John saw. Hallelujah. With all those who have got victory. Or the beast, which was wrong. His image, which was the engraving of a false commandment. His mark, which was scar upon the people that obeyed his false commandment. The number would, of his name, which was all the people numbered in his body. Uh, and he was, that commandment was like Lord over their life. So we need to come out of that and return to the truth. Because he's coming. He's at the door. He's at the door. He's coming real soon. So everybody, let's get it right. Let's come united together as one in the faith. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Class dismissed. I love you. He loves you more. Oh yeah, hey y'all. I left one little part out. I, I forgot about the part where John was uh, talking about uh, no buying or selling. Well, remember Constantine's decree was that you would no longer keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, but you would do your buying and selling on that day, and you would from now on keep Sunday, the first day of the week, venerable day of the sun. You would keep it holy. So you would do your buying and selling now on the Sabbath day, and not on the first day. So John is telling his people, no one can buy or sell except those who have the mark of the beast. No one can buy and sell on the seventh day Sabbath. Remember we read that in Nehemiah there, that no buying and selling on God's holy day, the seventh day Sabbath. But Constantine's edict, his decree was that now you will do your buying and selling on the seventh day Sabbath and you will keep the first day of the week holy instead. And so John's telling the people, the only ones who can buy and sell on the seventh day Sabbath are those who are following this decree that was put in this false teaching to keep Sunday holy and do their buying and selling on the seventh day Sabbath. John's saying no. Don't do your buying and selling on the seventh day Sabbath. The only ones who can do the buying and selling on the seventh day Sabbath are those who have the mark of the beast. So let us not have that mark. We don't do buying and selling on God's holy seventh-day Sabbath. We honor Him and keep it holy in honor of Him, our Creator. He's our God, we're His people. And it shows that by honoring His holy seventh-day Sabbath. So it's referring to the only people that can buy and sell on this Saturday, God's seventh-day Sabbath, are those who are under that mark. They're in that body. We don't want to be in that body. The King's coming soon. Let's be ready. Hallelujah. He's coming. I love y'all. He loves you more.